Hello, hello, hello. Jake, 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 Jake. Uh, hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of You Know What It Is. You know what time it is, fam. It's uh, Jake and Off, dude. Welcome to the new episode, the number six episode. We're doing it. We're doing another epi, dude. Uh, thank you to everyone who sent in emails. Um and uh everything over the past couple weeks i don't have anything for this week unfortunately you guys are uh well actually i guess technically one of the things is something that my friend dustin slint sent to me uh but it was not for jake and off purposes it was just because it's really funny and uh i'll i'll get to it but thanks thank you um as always you can send anything to uh jake and dot off dot podcast at gmail.com or uh hit us up on instagram at jake and dot off dot podcast give it a follow give it give it a give it a follow on there um <clears throat> what's new what's new with me um nothing much i uh have began another semester of school i'm in school um a lot of people who know me know that about me um it's weird it's weird being a 28 year old college student straight up dude uh it's odd as fuck uh i feel like i go there and i feel like a lot of the students uh my my fellow students think that i'm like a weird old person and rightly so because like they don't know anything about me you know what i mean but i do i do give off um old guy vibes or whatever I have gray hair. That's like a kind of a dead giveaway. But to be fair, they don't know me. So I would also think that I was a weird old guy probably if I were them. But then also it's it's weird because I'm like, man, I don't want to I don't want any of you guys to know anything about me. Um, unless you're listening to this podcast, then uh, thanks for tuning in. I um, yeah, I don't know, man. Uh I think that uh, it's nice. It's nice to be back in school. Got to be a lifelong learner, dude. Always got to be learning, man. You have to. You have to. You have to be adaptable. You have to adapt. Um, it's super important. So I've been a little bit busy this week. I'm I'm working at the Comedy Club of Kansas City this weekend. Uh, I wish I would have mentioned something in last week's episode that I put out. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, performing there all weekend, so it's a lot of shows in a little amount of time. I'm hosting, which is um, always a fun time. When you host there, you also have to host the open mic afterwards on Thursday nights, and so I did that, and there were so many comedians on the open mic list last night. There are 40 comics on the open mic list. And a lot of the people, a lot of the comedians that signed up and that went up there were um, new. They were really new. But I guess it's that time of the year, right, where uh, people are like, all right, my New Year's resolution is that I'm going to start doing stand-up comedy this year, you know? And um, so maybe it's something like that, but there's a lot there's quite a few new new faces and stuff like that and um that was so it was 40 comedians without the people who are normally there and i had to host the whole thing it was not over until like midnight i don't think so pretty late pretty late one last night but it was a good time people stuck around till the end so that's a good sign normally i i think that sometimes people don't realize that they can just get up and leave you know, like they can just ask for their check and leave the the open mic. But whatever, you know, that'll happen. Um, Yeah, so it's going to be a fun weekend. Two more shows tonight, two more shows tomorrow. I'm a busy little boy. I am a busy little boy. I got some other shows coming up. I'm going to be in Gardner, Kansas. That's pretty cool. At Experiment Brewing Company um on the 28th and on the 27th i'm gonna be in topeka kansas holy cow all over the place look at me <laughs> hitting the road dude getting anywhere from an hour and a half to 30 minutes outside of kansas city pretty sick dude that's a big range it's a wide range uh 
pretty much a tour. <laughs> I'll be in Topeka, though, at the Brass Rail um, on that date. And, uh, yeah, man, pretty sick, pretty sweet. I love doing comedy so much. Um, come check out a show sometime if you if you are so inclined. But no matter what, listen to this podcast. It's been, uh, dude, so I saw this thing just a little bit ago, and it was cracking me up. Right before I came here, something was that was trending on Twitter was P. Diddy. But not like the letter P, but like P-E-E, Diddy. So like making fun of P. Diddy. And the reason why is because he's, I guess, in an open relationship with a rapper named Young Miami and she has a podcast where she said that she likes to get pissed on and I don't know I've I found the clip and it's honestly um it made me laugh really hard so here it is let's get rid of the hair it's too hot for the hair we not in the winter oh okay so I should say that person that was just speaking is Trina for those of you listening, famous rapper Trina. Uh, and uh, this is Young Miami's podcast, though. It's called Carisha Please. Her name is Carisha. Um, but she goes by Young Miami. And uh, this is, they're doing like a cards, you know, like one of those games where you like draw a card and it's like, take a shot if you like da 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 da. And um, so, yeah. So Trina is her guest on this episode. Oh, okay. Yeah, why I picked this one? Oh, Lord. <laughs> what is it? No. <laughs> I can't say it. You got to. It say take a shot if you like golden showers. I do. Golden showers? Meaning when the guy pees on you? Mm-hmm. Pee on you everywhere? You like it? I just like it. You do? Mm-hmm. Freak. <laughs> <laughs> Freak of the week, huh? So you say take a shot. You not take. You say take a shot. Oh, we need yeah, a shot. I take a shot. I you like go to shower. I do. But it's like just... peeing on you. I don't know. It's just I don't know. It's just too. Sexy. I'm gonna be honest. Hold on, one more thing. I need something a little, a little less. So I'm gonna be honest with you. I've never had a golden shower. I did. did you? <laughs> <laughs> I've never had a golden shower. Like I've given one. Oh, is that Ooh. the same thing as squirting or? Yeah, they well they say that I don't know, but I. I don't had to go to shower and I like that. I give them, I give them. Mm-hmm. Go to shower, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but I've never, I've never experienced that. Hmm. It, I'm all about trying new things, though. <laughs> go to shower. It's, it's fun. Yeah. Like, you know, when you drunk and you just. And they just peeing all over your body? You just, like, you know, pee in your butt, pee in your pussy. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> and then y'all still have sex after? <laughs> it, it depends. Like you can pee on me in the shower. You can pee on me like once you come. Like it just depends. It just, it just depends on how the night flow. I gotta try this out. Go to shower. We gonna take one more. Cause that golden shower, huh? That's lit. <laughs> so yeah. So <laughs> she said that she likes people <laughs> to pee in her butt and pee in her pussy and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what dude good for her right like no judgment it's there's no judgment it just the situation is like so funny because obviously like trina is like a little like taken back like it caught her off guard and she was trying to be like polite and like open-minded and stuff but like obviously was like a little like you get pissed on like what you know which is fine like that's also you know a, a, a i feel like a relatively like normal reaction but yeah dude getting peed i mean like okay i would never get peed on i could never get peed on or like pooped on you know what i mean i I don't i couldn't do that could you if you can send me an email (laughs) but for real though i just i can't wrap my head around it i mean pooping and pee peeing is and like puke and stuff is gross it's really gross um you know bodily fluids like those are the nastiest ones and uh so the idea of like i just feel like any amount of piss you know is gonna be a big a big turnoff for me i just don't know it's all warm dude you know what i mean like they're peeing warm pee pee all over you (laughs) peeing warm pee pee all over you (laughs) 
But you get what I'm saying, though. It's fucking. I don't know. I I couldn't I couldn't do it. Just the thought of getting pissed on, or and and like not to mention they weren't talking about getting shit on, but getting shit on would be. I definitely. There's just that is so far removed from. I don't know, from from anything that I would ever consider. But I don't want to be rude. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be rude. If you like somebody to pee on you, or you like somebody to poop all over you, you sick fuck. <laughs> if you like it, fine. Just as long as you're not being a bad person about it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's okay if you like getting pissed on. It's okay if you like getting pooped all over. Poop, pooped on all over your body. But you just can't be a bad guy about it or lady. You know, you can't you can't like force people to poop on you or pee on you or whatever. <clears throat> um, You know, I imagine that it would be I mean, it might, I don't know. Maybe it isn't hard to force somebody to poop on you. But I do think that that would be like a difficult thing to force somebody to do, I guess. <laughs> um, Yeah, don't. You know, you have to be, just be cool. It's all right if you like that, if you like pooping on somebody. I feel like pooping on somebody is actually, like, weirder than getting pooped on. Do you know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Or, like, pissing on somebody is weirder than getting pissed on, right? Because it... If you're getting like pissed or pooped on, I can't believe it. If you're getting if you're getting pooped on, it's you're like I'm a fucking like I want to be like degraded kind of shit probably. I would imagine. You know, like I like deserve to be like I'm fucking, you know, a piece of shit or whatever, which like is so much more relatable than being like, yeah, I'm going to treat people like they're a toilet. <laughs> you know and so i can wrap my head around i can at least like like get behind the fact that it's not the weirdest part of the situation like i feel like all of us a lot of people would jump to the conclusion that like oh it's like really weird that young miami wants to get peed on but it's even weirder to pee on her i think so how about that i mean i don't know Unless you are just doing it because uh, they're your partner and you love them. <laughs> uh, is that something that you do? Is That's not something that you do with your with your wife. You don't poop on them, probably. Your partner for life. Your husband, whatever. No way. <laughs> oh, man. That's tough. That is tough. I shouldn't have even weighed in on this, I feel like. Honestly. Um, props to young Miami, I guess. So I guess she's dating P Diddy or they're in like an open relationship because P Diddy had a kid recently with another lady and everybody was like, oh my God, like P Diddy is stepping out on young Miami. Like, da, 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 like he cheated on her. Um, but she was like, no, I knew <laughs> she was like, I knew about the baby. So that's chill. I mean, she seems like a pretty open-minded person. And, uh, you know, but, yeah, it was just funny how she sort of acted after getting ex exposed on her own podcast by her own card game of it being like, take a shot if you like golden showers. And she was, like, embarrassed. It's okay, young Miami. Don't be embarrassed. Um, just be careful. Just be careful. That's really... That's really the only thing you got to worry about. Piss. Piss can be lethal, dude. Piss can be... <laughs> Piss can be terrible. I, um... I, like, one of the only times that I remember, like, peeing my pants when I was a kid um, was... It was terrible. I was at, like, a little kid, like, my little soccer game. You know, I was practice or whatever, like the first practice of soccer ever. 
soccer career, my entire career. And uh, I get there, and I ended up, I peed in my pants during practice. I was very little. And uh, my coach, I, I started crying, and my coach, his name was Coach Chip, came up to me and was, like, trying to make me feel better. And he was like, it's okay, Jake. I pee my pants all the time. <laughs> I was like, I just remember being like, what the fuck, dude? You piss in your pants too? You fucking weirdo. Why are you telling me that? Gross, Coach Chip. You sicko. Um, it wasn't actually like that. He was just trying to make me feel better by saying that, oh, I pee in my pants all the time too. But it didn't make me feel better. It just made me feel weird that an adult I know pees in his pants all the time. You know what I'm saying? So that's my piss. That's my little piss story. That's my little piss story for you. How about that? We all, we all got a piss story. You got a piss story, dude. We've all, we've all got a pee story, dude. You know it. You know you do. You know you got a pee story. Um, okay. So this thing my friend Dustin sent me. So this is kind of complicated. I tried to read into it a little bit, but basically the whole situation is, is this guy, Brian Walsh, has been arrested and they think that he murdered his wife, Anna Walsh, or Anna, one of the two. A-N-A. I think it's Anna. Anna Walsh. And... The deal is, is that this lady also was a property manager for this big real estate company in Washington, D.C., and one of the things that happened at the property that she was managing is uh, that these guys were running this fake security organization that was giving gifts to Secret Service agents. So that's one of the things that was happening. But it, it and like, you know, I, I only bring that up to explain like the kind of people that these folks are. This guy uh, or this lady apparently, um, you know, stood to inherit a substantial amount of money. Uh, and her husband is being accused of of murdering her. And there's some pretty good evidence. Um, one of the things being that his they have his google search history so they have brian walsh's google search history and they read it out loud in court and i gotta say it is one of the (laughs) I, i it's sad obviously like a lady is murdered but this video of this court proceeding where they read this is like I don't know the camera work in it is like sort of like brilliant in a way (laughs) because it starts where it's like you're you're behind the prosecutor and you see sort of the back and the side of the prosecutor's face and you see this guy a little bit blurry standing in front of her while she's reading this and then it zooms in on his face a little bit but I'll, I'll go ahead and play it um this is Brian Walsh's Google search history and this all went down on New Year's Eve so He's like searching this stuff right around New Year's Eve, so. At 4.55 a.m. on January 1st, he searched how long before a body starts to smell. At 4.58 a.m., how to stop a body from decomposing. At 5.20 a.m., he searched how to embalm a body. At 5.47 a.m., 10 ways to dispose dispose of a dead body if you really need to. At 6.25 a.m. on the 1st, how long for someone to be missing to inherit? At 6.34 a.m. on the 1st, can you throw away body parts? At 9.29 a.m., what does formaldehyde do? At 9.34 a.m. on the 1st, how long does DNA last? At 9.59 a.m., can identification be made on partial remains? At 11.34 a.m., dismemberment and the best ways to dispose of a body. At 11.44, how to clean blood from wooden floor. At 11.56 on the first, luminol to detect blood. At 1.08, what happens when you put body parts in ammonia? At 1.21 p.m., is it better to throw crime scene 
clothes away or wash them. <laughs> so that's the end of it. But there were even more things that he Googled. This guy basically was like looking for a BuzzFeed list of, <laughs> you know, best ways to dispose of a body. <laughs> I mean, I can't believe it, dude. Can you imagine committing a crime and then Googling <laughs> how to cover up crime? Oh, my God, dude. He murdered his wife, clearly. I feel like clearly he did. Obviously, I'm not a judge. I'm not a member of the jury. So I'm I'm speculating. But, I mean, come on. You can't be Googling that stuff. It seems likely that he did it. Um, is what I sh should say. Uh, obviously, these are all alleged, but I found this article that lists even more of them, even more of the things that he Googled on December 27th, two days after Christmas and um, three days before this woman went missing. What's the best state to divorce for a man? <laughs> uh. <laughs> Uh, I wonder what. I wonder if this guy and his wife are having problems. <laughs> How long does DNA last is one of my favorite things. Doesn't that just sound like a question that like a like a fourth grader or like a third grader would ask? How long does DNA last? <laughs> uh, what a moron, dude. Uh, and then a couple of days, a day after the first, uh, he Googled hacksaw best tool to dismember. It's like, dude, what are you doing? How could you possibly think that putting this into Google was a good idea right after you murdered your wife? Go to the library. If you're going to Google this stuff, man, like why use somebody else's computer or something? I mean, God, dude. Can you identify a body with broken teeth? I mean, it basically, he's like leaving out. But here's the thing. Okay, I guess here's a point that I should make is even though it is silly that um, he uh, he Googled all of these things, they haven't found this lady's body yet. And so that's kind of a big deal when you have a murder investigation because um, it's a big part of proving without a shadow of a doubt that somebody was murdered. Right? So that's kind of a big deal. But he also Googled. <laughs> he also Googled, can you be charged with murder without a body? <laughs> I mean, come on, dude. <laughs> it's like, uh, can you imagine doing that for like another crime? How to commit armed robbery. <laughs> Best mask to wear when robbing bank. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. And this guy, if you could see him, dude, if you could see this dude, he looks so, like, just disheveled, and um, he looks so uh, just beat up and kind of gross-looking dude. It looks like one side of his jaw is swollen or something. Maybe he got punched or whatever. But, uh, yeah, man, he looks gross, and he's definitely got murder face. That's for sure. He definitely has a murderer's face and eyes uh, and Google search history. <laughs> oh, that was so funny. Shout out to my friend Dustin for um, uh, sending that to me. But yeah, so the whole thing with this guy, too, is uh, he committed uh, like f art fraud. So these are like people. These people are rich. You know, these are pretty rich people. And this dude uh, was busted in 2018 for selling two paintings that he claimed were part of Warhol's 1978 Shadows series. And, an, uh, and he sold them on eBay for $80,000. What? Dude, who who is buying art 
like that much money's worth of art for eighty thousand dollars on eBay, dude. Come on, what is this? <laughs> Who is this guy? Um, <clears throat> yeah, he totally scammed, uh, scammed somebody out of eighty thousand dollars. But the the stranger thing about this is this whole fact, this coincidence that um, this uh, weird security organization was being ran out of a building that this lady happened to manage. Um, I don't think that they uh, I don't think that it had anything to do with her murder. I think that it's pretty clear that her husband probably murdered her. Um, (laughs) But, uh, you know. It could be maybe this has something to do with it. I guess we'll find out when he goes and has a trial. But uh, yeah, the, these guys were running this weird security operation and were were sort of giving bribes to Secret Service agents, and they got arrested. I remember when this happened, um, and they got they got arrested, and uh, it was a pretty big deal. One of the dudes was on Jill Biden's Jill biden's um security detail so that's pretty pretty interesting hmm uh i don't know i'm not really suggesting that there's any conspiracy theory at all i don't think that the two are connected but um yeah that's just a fact of it that's just a fact of who this lady was it's interesting i um you know i feel like a lot of times when we talk about conspiracy theories now like it used to be when we talked about conspiracy theories or people that believe in conspiracy theories we were referring to almost like um hippie people hippie kind of folks you know those kind of people like guys with like long hair and wearing you know tie-dye headbands and being like the government's putting um something in the water or whatever but increasingly now it's like been tied to like right wing sort of um uh people and like conservative people but i think it's important to remember that it's actually everybody (laughs) um it's actually all of us can fall prey to conspiracy theories at any time uh and about various amounts of stuff um you know there are plenty of quote-unquote liberal conspiracy theories i was just listening to one um uh, some some interesting uh, coverage about one, rather, I should say, uh, on a, a podcast I really like called QAnon Anonymous. Uh, and they had this journalist on. His name is Anthony Monsui. He's from France. And uh, he did a lot of really good uh, investigation into uh, the Cambridge Analytica scandal and specifically into Chris Wiley, who was the gentleman who sort of became the uh, leaker that led to that um, uh, that story sort of breaking. And they go through and they um, sort of paint a different picture than this guy and, and change the narrative that this this guy has been pushing, because if you remember anything about the Cambridge Analytica thing, Um, The whole deal was that Cambridge Analytica was this tool that Donald Trump used in 2016 to like flip the election in his favor and all that all that shit. Um, If you looked into it at all, like and and did any sort of um, or, or, you know, read any sort of like expert analysis on what happened and how it all worked or listened to the people involved in like the Trump campaign about the Cambridge Analytica stuff, it was pretty clear that, um, you know, this sort of, like, influence of this Cambridge Analytica program was a little overblown. It was it was being made into something that it wasn't. Uh, and it it is interesting because they pointed out in this coverage that they do on, on the podcast, QAnon Anonymous, that um you know uh at the end of the day it it became a convenient narrative that Donald Trump had this tool to win the 2016 election that was you know a violation of like all this you know privacy of american citizens and stuff like that 
Um, but at the end of the day, that's not really the case. And of course it isn't, you know, of course it isn't. Um, having like these simple explanations for, uh, these complicated things that happen in politics, you know, how some, a candidate like Donald Trump wins is, uh, you know, there's always going to be very complicated answers to these questions. And that's, and that's the thing that conspiracy theories of all types sort of, um, deprive us of right when we get hung up on them and especially when people get obsessed with them is they they cause you to miss the forest for the trees right um is that that's the saying right uh you you get so hung up on you know this one particular thing who killed jfk uh what really happened on 9 11 like da 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 all this sh- shit you know and some of them are more legitimate than others, of course, but at the end of the day, it, it, it all leads to the same place. It all leads to the same thing, which is um, that we are, uh, you know, none of us are really in control, I guess, is what I would say. Some people have more control than other people over things, but nobody is actually completely in control. And that's a hard thing for a lot of people to deal with. Um, And it doesn't matter whether you're conservative or liberal or or whatever, you know. But I would encourage you to really uh, take the time to think critically about the things that you believe. And don't be afraid to change your mind, dude. Don't be afraid to change your mind. Um, The Cambridge Analytica thing also I feel like is relevant uh, still. And that sort of narrative is, is relevant still as we move into this phase um, where we're talking about Hunter Biden's laptop and these Twitter files and did big tech censor, um, you know, did, did big tech tech censorship, uh, lead to, uh, Joe Biden, help Joe Biden win the election. And I think it's sort of the same thing. It, it becomes this, like, that's, of course, that's not the case. Like them silencing the story on Hunter Biden's laptop there's no way that that had any legitimate sway over the election. If you even just dig into the numbers a little bit, Twitter in the United States um, specifically has something like 14.5 million um, monetizable daily active users, I believe is the, um, you know, data point that they, that, that, matters right these are people who are using twitter enough every single day that twitter can make ad revenue off of them by putting ads in their twitter feed so there's 14.5 million of those people in the united states uh how many of them on twitter are using twitter in a way that would be showing them political news like what's going on with hunter biden's laptop not a lot not a huge portion of that maybe I would say maybe generously 50% even, if you wanted to say. So so around seven and a quarter of a million people. So we're talking about the United States voting population, seven and a quarter million people, and how many of those people who are participating in this, you know, sort of um, extra political discourse are actually going to vote in an election, you know? And the answer is zero. Now, that doesn't mean that it was right for Twitter to put the kibosh on the the Hunter Biden laptop story. That's not the argument that I'm making. But what I am saying is the notion that it would influence an election um, to be won or lost is, is, I think, very unrealistic. And it would be very difficult to prove that. The same way that it would be very difficult to prove that any of the Cambridge Analytica shit... um, you know, actually influenced people to change their minds and vote for Donald Trump uh, or something or like flipped some switch in their brains is sort of the narrative that was around it. So I think it's just important to remember like the scale of these things and Cambridge Analytica, the scale of information that they had and um, the amount of, of, of people that they were targeting was far bigger than even the amount of monetizable daily active users on Twitter so in in the United States that is so it's just you know it's one of those things where it's important to 
uh, I guess think critically about them and don't get don't get hooked, dude. Don't get hooked. Um, it's always bad news. I do I do think conspiracy theories are so interesting and so interesting how um, people get you know people get taken taken into those things. I want to go to the the Scientology place in Kansas City and uh see a movie there they always put uh these movie tickets they they used to in my old apartment they would put movie tickets free movie tickets at the church of scientology uh on my back door and i always thought about going i'm like man what movies are they playing it's obviously it's not like they're showing you know the new black panther or something they're they're scientology propaganda films and then they try to probably get you to sign up for uh, some sort of test of some kind. Maybe I'll go. Um, maybe I'll go and check out a Scientology movie. And maybe I'll join up. Maybe I'll become a Scientologist so that I can fuck Tom Cruise. Yeah, you heard me. I'm going to bang Tom Cruise. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to bang Tom Cruise. I'm joking, dude. Come on. He ain't, he ain't like that. <laughs> he probably is. Um, yeah, man. Uh, so that was my, that was my conspiracy theory rant for the episode. Um, be careful, dude. You gotta be so careful what you read and the things that you believe. Um, especially the things that you believe strongly, like things that you're like unwilling to let go of. You gotta, you can't, you can't make any of those things be stuff that's on the news it's bad bad idea brother that's bad news brother uh media literacy in this country is so low dude it's so low i um i i guess what has me thinking about the media there was um so there's a dust up happening right now in uh with the sort of daily wire crew regarding this deal with steven crowder i guess so he got sent um basically got offered a contract with the daily wire and the whole deal was the contract was for 50 million dollars but if something happened and they got demonetized or they got you know strikes against them on youtube they would be deducted uh, or there would be like you know deductions from their pay they would lose 20 percent or something like that and it, it was really interesting the sort of uh fight that was happening because steven crowder sort of like blasted uh he was like these conservative media people are like not who you think like they don't actually want to help you yada 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 you know and um then Candace Owens responded and called him a bitch. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Uh, he said that he pulled a bitch move. Um, and uh, and then Crowder responded from the, like to these, you know, the Daily Wire people uh, attacking him or, you know, clapping back by playing a recording of a phone call that he had with one of their, you know, producers or something, you know, executives at daily wire where he said that um you know newcomers need to be wage slaves at first <laughs> so that's not a good look but um none of it's really a good look anyways i mean they all are terrible but it's just interesting to see this sort of um conglomeration happening with all these people right because what is the you know what was the sort of the promise of social media as far as you know information sharing and stuff goes is that you know it, it's it's democratized so anybody can share anything at any time right like that that was supposed to be the end all be all of you know social media that's what that was, was supposed to make it so great <clears throat> but it turns out you know as as we've sort of continued to chug along this path is that actually it, it kind of it, it kind of sucks you know it's kind of not good for humanity in general um this whole social media thing because a um 
not anybody can share anything at any time um even even people who uh you know are folks that i would i would you know say it's the most important for them to to be able to share stuff on social media protesters in authoritarian countries things of that nature uh they can't do it because those authorities have access to twitter as well and can either become embedded in these communities or they can um you know uh, essentially cozy up to Twitter and gain access uh, to, to be able to unmask these people who are, you know, sharing information in these ways. So that's number one. Not everybody can post whatever they want at any time. Uh, the next issue, I would say, the, the big one, is that people don't understand how it works at all. Nobody actually understands how social media works and I don't mean in the sense of like, you know, algorithms and, and all that shit, but nobody is really aware. And, and I feel like this falls in, into the category of media literacy, I guess. Nobody is really aware um, the way that uh, social media companies operate and what their goals actually are. And, and that's ad revenue. Right. Um, that's why monetizable daily active users is a is a stat for Twitter, because that's what they want. They want more of those people. Which, of course, I mean, that's the point of any company is to make a bunch of money, right? That's what any company seeks to do, any corporation. It's not unique to social media or, you know, big tech or whatever. But regardless, that's that's the second problem, is that most people are unaware that, you know, this app that they're spending so much time on is designed to keep them looking at it longer. And um, that that is what makes these apps money. And so that's that's another aspect of it. I think that the other interesting thing that we're starting to see happen now is, you know, before it was like, okay, well, we're going to get, you know, all of these independent news sources or whatever, and people will be able to discern um, you know, what is good and what isn't. That's not true. That was never going to happen. But now you're seeing these, um, you know, independent people like Steven Crowder or whatever who are able to uh, completely uh, just ignore any sort of, um, you know, aspect of journalistic integrity or whatever like when covering these issues and i actually don't even think that that steven crowder is the only person and i don't think that this is just a conservative thing either um but there's now a lot of people cropping up that uh are really willing to talk out of their ass completely in, in a way that uh didn't really exist before and and really use a lot of like rhetoric that is insightful and polarizing. And, um, you know, that was sort of one of the interesting things that this um, Anthony Monsui fella uh, sort of depicted. And they, they spoke with a guy who did uh, some very serious, you know, academic research into the Cambridge Analytica scandal and, and was able to sort of prove, because it wasn't that hard to prove that, these sort of um, things that that this company was promising aren't actually real and, and they couldn't actually do them or achieve the sort of um, influence that they believed they could achieve, right? And this gentleman who did this research wrote uh, an article that was something along the lines of like, you know, we should stop being so mean to... Trump supporters <laughs> and he said that it was like the worst he, he got the most backlash from that article than he had like ever gotten in his life and that's not surprising at all right because um most of this stuff sort of exists to pit us against one another right and and I have you know there are like people in my life who um you know really do believe like in our good people you know they're good people but really do believe that the the people uh 
on, you know, quote unquote, the other side of the aisle or what have you are legitimately all monsters and are all bigots or racists or whatever. And it's just not true. That's just not the case. And just like anything, it's very easy to fall into that mindset because it's a convenient excuse. It's a convenient um, way of thinking rather than, you know, actually exploring the nuances uh, of the world around us, I guess. So that just got me thinking a lot about that, I suppose. Um, yeah, you guys got to be so careful, guys. Um, speaking of being careful, I will say there's something that I listened to. And I don't have any reason to believe that this guy isn't telling the truth. And quite frankly, I really... Um, the, the thing that he is talking about is very aligned with, um, you know, what I believe. Uh, and so take that with what you will. But I listened to an interview, um, that this gentleman named Mike Preisner did, uh, for a podcast called Eyes Left, where he interviewed a guy that, uh, was detained in Guantanamo Bay and tortured by, um, Ron DeSantis. <laughs> yeah, he uh he got tortured by Ron DeSantis in Guantanamo Bay. Ron DeSantis, famous Florida governor, potential presidential candidate, potential um but also uh Navy JAG officer. He was a JAG officer in the Navy. A lot of people don't know that. He does he just says that he's like a veteran a lot of the times. If you watch his like political ads and stuff, he just makes sure like reference to the fact that he's a veteran and, um, you know, but he, it, there, there's not been a lot like going into detail about his military career. And I would suspect that the reason why is because he tortured people <laughs> and or oversaw the torture of people. It's a really interesting interview and I would occur, encourage you to go check it out. Go check it out. Um, Eyes Left Podcast. But anyways, that's going to wrap up the episode, I think. That's it. Um, You know, I really appreciate you guys checking it out again. uh, Send anything at all to jakeand.off.podcast at gmail. Um, It can be a link to something, whatever. uh, Or to jakeand.off.podcast at gmail.com. Or on Instagram. Excuse me. Um, But... With that said, be careful who you piss on out there, Uh, and I love you, and thank you for listening. Be good. Be good to yourself. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.